Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. In today's episode, we are going to be discussing sunscreen. What do you need to know? Which sunscreens are clean? Which ones you absolutely need to avoid? And should we be applying sunscreen to our eyes? The other question I get quite a bit is, well, I'm trying to get vitamin D in my body through sun exposure, so I don't want to wear sunscreen. I'm going to talk about some ways internally that you can also access reduction of oxidative stress throughout the body so that the body can better tolerate the UV radiation from outside, but also the light radiation from our LEDs, from our screens and technology and LEDs in the homes and the shops and the airports and everywhere, you know, including your car if you drive a newer vehicle. I love older vehicles for a couple of reasons, low EMFs, and I don't get blasted with LEDs while I'm driving. So getting back to the sunscreen topic and people that have issues with wearing sunscreens or concerns. Now, some of those concerns are actually quite valid because over a number of years, lots of research has come out to talk about the issues with chemical sunscreen filters. So essentially, there's two types of sunscreens. There's a chemical filter like oxybenzone, avobenzone. There's even new ones that are coming out. And the way to tell if the sunscreen that you're currently using is a chemical sunscreen filter is if you either go to your bottle of your sunscreen or your primer or your makeup foundation or your moisturizer with sunscreen, if it says anything with active ingredients or medicinal ingredients in a specific section, and you see anything that ends with an ain or an own in the medicinal ingredients section, you might have to go to the manufacturer's website. And this is actually something I do for my clients to help them figure out if the sunscreens that they're using are clean or not. Now, not only that, but I just wrapped up a consultation for a lovely client, Alice, and she was using a mineral sunscreen, so it didn't have any of the chemical filters. It was a zinc sunscreen. Oftentimes in mineral sunscreens, the ingredients are zinc and titanium, and those are considered mineral sunscreens. And I have an excellent 20% zinc sunscreen that blends in beautifully. It goes on white for about five seconds, and then it blends in beautifully. It's also very hydrating. It's great for the face, the eyelids, the neck, the chest, the hands which I do recommend applying your sunscreen daily to those high real estate areas, even if you're just working at home because of the LEDs. This one is also fantastic for the body too, but sometimes we want a tinted sunscreen as well. So those often have the zinc and the titanium, which, you know, those are often also great, especially when they are of a primer type of quality to give a little bit of a matte look to the skin. So for Alice, what was interesting was she was using a zinc sunscreen. However, one of the non-medicinal ingredients in the complete ingredients list was canola oil. This is something I'm seeing more and more of in mass-produced beauty products. And someone asked me, oh, you must love the beauty industry. And actually I said, I don't like the beauty industry because of so many toxins that are in our personal care products, ranging from our skincare, our makeup, and our hair care. So it's not just with sunscreens, looking out for the chemical filters and not using those because they are known hormone disruptors. The last thing we want to be doing is using products that are known hormone disruptors. So those are going to be ingredients such as parabens and phthalates and the chemical sunscreen filters are the most common hormone disrupting agents in sunscreen. But now we have to worry about canola oil. So you're likely listening and have already started to stop consuming canola oil in your foods. You literally have to check every single label these days because it's in everything. And now over the last six months or so, I've noticed it creep into some of the biggest beauty brands out there. Why do you think that might be? Well, canola oil might help a formulation seem hydrating because of the oil properties. But what happens with these big brands is they often get sold and then to increase margins and make a higher profit on the product, they're starting to add canola oil. So buyer beware these days. That's why I love doing what I do to help you stay on the straight and narrow and also receive those updates as they come along with products that either need to get phased out or new 
better options that have still stood the test of time and are still going to perform. So with sunscreen, absolutely applying it to the eyelids daily is really key. In the past, if you've used the sunscreen that stung your eyes or made your eyes water, that is an indication that there that was very likely a chemical sunscreen formulation. And that's generally what they do. Don't even get me started on being at the beach and hearing some, or smelling someone upwind of me spraying sunscreen. What's also interesting about the sprayed sunscreens is that those agents are studied if they're safe topically, not on your smooth mucosa in your respiratory tract. The same thing actually goes with sprayed on sunless tanners. They're not tested on whether or not they're safe or not in the smooth mucosa of the nose and the respiratory tract, not to mention the vaginal canal and the smooth mucosa there too. So I do have some excellent sunless tanner options that are actually organic and from Ireland of all places on my skin shop. So that's my place to send you to shop, rest assured that I pre-vetted everything in there to be as clean as possible while still performing. And I'm constantly updating and adding items, removing items. And for those who are one-on-one -on -one clients of mine, you absolutely get that customized ongoing support with me, not only in your one-on-one, -on -one, but then also with follow-up calls to make sure that in the seasons we're adjusting things as needed. Now with the delicate eye area, not only do we have the concerns about skin cancers, which is very real, the published literature is totally conclusive on this, that sunscreen does reduce the risk of skin cancer. What can we do internally, though, to enhance our body's response to become more tolerant to the sun? Well, previously, I would say about two, three years ago, if I went into the sun in Canada, no less, I would burn in about 10 minutes. Now in South Florida, I can be outside for pretty much all day and actually not burn anymore. Why is that? Because I've done the work. I've reduced oxidative stress ongoing in regards to purifying my air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and detoxing things like yeast, fungi, mold, heavy metals, and parasites. But what else can happen? What else can we do internally to bolster up our body's protection against radiation in the form of light radiation? This is where antioxidants come in handy. You've probably heard of things like vitamin C in your skincare, and with great serums, you can get additional antioxidant protection to help your body manage free radicals that slip through your sunscreen. So that word sunblock is actually a misnomer. There's really no such thing as a complete sunblock because rays will still slip through. That's what a moisturizer with antioxidants and peptides do, or that's what an antioxidant serum with things like vitamin C does is they help in support and in tandem with your mineral sunscreen to actually gobble up those free radicals. However, when we take internally antioxidants, this does so from the inside out. I did a study for the anti-aging dermal formula that's on my skin shop, uh, what was this about, probably two years ago now, and I was really surprised at the outcomes from that study. I actually had the same outcomes as someone on the other side of the country. We did the study simultaneously. We looked at a group of people over four weeks, and then I extended it to eight weeks. And across the board at four weeks, with taking this particular antioxidant, actually the powerhouse of superoxide dismutase, and a few other enzymes in there, we saw a reduction of pigmentation, skin redness, fine lines, wrinkles. The skin actually looked more golden. And with the eyes, the eyes looked less dark, less red, and less puffy. Interesting. So rejuvenating the eyes isn't just about using skincare or getting things like neuromodulators around the eyes or lasers or microneedling or even eyelid surgery. But really, when we take this approach, working from the inside out to reduce oxidative stress, consume things like antioxidants in the form of a nutraceutical or like a tablet that you swallow, 
these can all help. It's never going to be one thing that does everything. It's always going to be a combination approach. And then over time, you will be able to see the beautiful benefits of that. So when it comes to the eyes, darkness around the eyes is related to the skin becoming very thin. The skin around the eyes is as thin as an eggshell. So what we want to do is to protect the skin and also do things to promote more collagen, sleep well, and reduce oxidative stress are all going to be helpful. Now, when it comes to rejuvenation for the eyes, that's where at-home dermal rolling is fantastic. I teach this tutorial in my seasonal skincare tutorials that I warmly invite you to register for right now over at theschoolofradiance.com. This is a seven-week journey where I take you from advanced practices and actually show you exactly how to apply your products towards more advanced protocols with retinol, with antioxidant serums, with peels, and of course, at-home dermal rolling, which I've been utilizing since 2011 with my clients. My clients that have the best skin, that have the most collagen, are absolutely doing their foundational skincare at home all the time consistently, and they're adding things like copper peptide, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, as well as things like retinol and glutathione and other things with their at-home dermal rolling. And by no means, purchase a roller offline or online rather that's from an influencer because more often than not, they're coming from China and they're typically only a 10, 20 use option. And then you have to throw them away and buy another one. Now, the rollers that I work with are a two-year product that have been made since the 90s. And I love to use serums that are designed to be used transdermally, not just topically. Getting back to what I shared with those aerosolized spray sunscreens, as well as those spray tans, we need to make sure that what we're using is specifically for the task at hand, such as putting your skincare on topically or after dermal rolling to be able to be penetrated deeper into the skin, about a thousand times deeper into the skin is what we get with at-home dermal rolling. So if you're tight on cash or tight on time, your at-home skincare, your at-home dermal rolling, regular sunscreen application, consuming things like antioxidants, omega and collagen will be very helpful. A lot of times people will be swayed by a gimmicky product online that showcases a very compelling before and after photo. Oftentimes when I see those ads too, I can easily tell that the before and after photo is actually a post-surgery photo. I can actually see the incision line based on my experience in oculoplastics for over 11 years. But this is very difficult for you as the consumer to see this. Or it's also difficult for you to notice if a picture has been photoshopped. And I see this time and time again with these skincare ads, especially around seasons where there are big time sales. And these companies are making a lot of money because they are preying on your fear response. They are targeting you because they know that you're already looking at things. So just based on you tuning into the show and following me on social media, that in and of itself is going to trigger an uptick in beauty ads. So becoming a more conscious consumer, avoiding chemical sunscreen filters, avoiding the latest trendy beauty cream, avoiding the latest trendy rejuvenation option is really key. Now, I did a previous episode talking about eye aging, so I kind of wanted to do a follow-up here to talk about the importance of sunscreen. Now, it's again, it's never going to be one thing, but if I've learned anything in my career, it's that the new rejuvenation options that are often provided in clinic, they do they, a couple of things can happen. Either we don't get the expected outcome. So I hear time and time again in one-on-one -on -one sessions, oh yeah, you know, I had three sessions of this, six sessions of this, but I didn't really get the results that I was hoping for from another clinic before they've met with me. And then they say, boy, I wish I met you sooner. So I didn't spend thousands of dollars on this package of something that didn't deliver. Now with some of the trendy rejuvenation options out there in particular, needling with radio frequency, this can sometimes pose a problem. And to be fully transparent with you, I actually refused to use radio frequency technology in the clinic because I came across a report of clinicians actually experiencing higher rates of 
reproductive cancers in utilization of these radiofrequency fields in and around their organs and their reproductive organs. So I just flat out refused, not to mention I didn't really see great results. So that's why I love other specific lasers for rejuvenating the skin. The other thing to be aware of is with needling with radiofrequency, radiofrequency is actually utilized in some fat loss modalities or body contouring modalities. When we heat up a fat cell, it can actually trigger fat cell death. That's the last thing we want in the face. So what I love to recommend is doing your dermal rolling at home, okay? Some clinics do in-clinic microneedling, and I'm sure they do a fantastic job. However, if you're looking at investing in something else in the clinic, this is where other more sophisticated lasers can really shine to promote collagen. So to reduce darkness around the eyes, it's fantastic to be consistent with your skincare, do your atom normal rolling, and do some other very specific laser rejuvenation options, sometimes some neuromodulators, and sometimes even surgery is the best option. Now, in my latest research article on oxidative stress status and its impacts on skin aging, I actually published this to start from least invasive to most invasive. Because sometimes with doing the at-home work, with reducing oxidative stress, with purifying your air, water, lighting, and electromagnetics, doing detoxing, your skincare, your at-home rolling, sometimes even using a eye-based retinol. Yes, you can use retinols around the eyes, which speed up the cell turnover. It's also a potent antioxidant that's been utilized since the 90s. However, if you are wanting to use retinol and you're wanting to use it around the eyes, it has to be an eye-specific formulation. Otherwise, you can get redness, flaking, irritation, stinging of the eyes from the retinol itself. So if you are using retinol on the face, it's a good idea, a good rule of thumb is to apply it no closer to the lash line than about one inch. Because when you put the products on, it's going to melt, it's going to heat up a little bit, and it will migrate a bit. So great tip, put your eye cream on and then your retinol. However, if you want to a couple of nights a week, use a eye-focused retinol. That's also a great option. And I have a great retinol eye gel on my skin shop as well. So sometimes I've seen people that have had just laser rejuvenation to the eyes, but not the rest of the face. I also don't recommend this. I recommend whatever you're doing to the face, you do to the eyelids, you do to the neck, you do to the neck, the chest, you also can do to the hands. And the reason for this is some lasers in the past, in particular, one that starts with an F, it's got an X and it's got an L in it, which was, you know, hailed as the best laser out there 10, 15 years ago. And then what happened was we started to see when people had six sessions of these things, that it actually wrecked the skin and it made the skin look really funny. The pores kind of melted, but you could see where the technology was applied or not applied. And we've also seen this with the initial rollout of CO2 lasers, which are pretty intense. You could, and if they were just done on the face and not on the neck, you could actually see a line of demarcation on the mandibular border of the jawline. And yes, I have seen this firsthand. Yes, I have seen firsthand the issues that certain resurfacing lasers have done in actually creating a discrepancy from where the laser was applied to where it wasn't applied. So that's why I love, love, love laser technologies and getting right in there into the medial campal area, you know, between the eyes to rejuvenate there too. Now, if you're wanting to do things like microneedling around the eyes, I teach this tutorial on how you can actually utilize a stamper at 0.1 millimeters to actually stimulate collagen to the delicate eye areas. Yes, it is possible. And a lot of lasers can't really target the eyelids in a very sophisticated way, especially with certain technicians being a bit nervous to go too close to the eyes. You know, safety is, is first and foremost. And I've just seen over the years a lot of lazy laser technicians and people that say have had laser rejuvenation but had key areas missed, like even the side of the neck. Don't even get me started on radio frequency and impacts potentially on the thyroid, the front of the neck, because that is also a thing. So the long and short of it, I highly recommend that you avoid the gimmicks. Stick with the the basic foundations your skincare, your sunscreen every day, mineral sunscreen only, which you can easily find my recommendations on my skin shop, at home rolling, and yes, sometimes adding in clinic rejuvenation, starting from least invasive to most invasive, 
which I have published in my article, which is why I can speak to it. No, this is not medical advice. This is for educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you absolutely must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Skin cancer is a very real thing. I've seen this metastasized into other skin cancers. If you're concerned about your vitamin D levels, there's oodles of research papers out there to support that, that application of supplementation rather with vitamin D is really helpful. And then other antioxidants as well, like superoxide dismutase, NAC, Qcerturin, zinc, green tea extract, to name a few. I love, love, love antioxidants for my skin. And in fact, with doing the oxidative stress reduction practices, I have my biohacking picks on my website, which you can easily browse. And I actually have them from the top down in list of priority just to make things a little bit easier for you. Then I did the parasite detoxing and added the antioxidants, omegas, and collagen routinely, I am amazed with how my skin, my hair, my nails, but also how, how, the, how I look, but also excess weight shedding off and improvements in my sleep, improvements in cognition, you know, brain fog, like what brain fog? Being able to form coherent sentences is a big deal. When we are looking to not only look and present as our best version, we also desire to speak properly and have coherent sentences with those in our personal and professional lives. It's all about having the looks as well as the energy match and not just look great on social media, but to actually look better in real life and present even better than you do on social media. And Jillian, a podcast listener, I had the privilege of meeting her at an event in Sarasota. And she said to me, wow, Rachel, you're more beautiful in real life. You present even better in real life. That's really my goal for you is to not just strive for looking a certain way, but to actually be, to be radiant. And radiant truly is that electromagnetic projection of all of your other internal body systems. Body, mind, spirit, energy are just your first four bodies. Radiance in Ayurveda is the 10th body. And it's essentially the quality of electromagnetic projection of all of your other systems, which is why I find studying radiance so interesting and in how we can cultivate it to become this more deeply beautiful radiant version, which does take time to learn how to cultivate, to have good values and boundaries around what makes you happy, what makes you feel good, and then to have that reinforced in your personal and professional lives with those who you engage with. Some people might not get what you're doing and that's okay. Oftentimes when you are on this path of desiring to become your healthiest version, it can initially become a little bit lonely. However, once you tap into this connection piece, this community piece, this radiance piece, other like-minded individuals are just going to show up. It's the neatest thing to... Now I have this beautiful community of friends who are also having these shared values with health and wellness and looking and feeling our best. And what I'm really happy to see are more and more clinicians, other doctors and nurses who are also seeing this. That's actually one of the other reasons why I wrote this paper was for my medical aesthetics colleagues to read it and learn about this concept of oxidative stress so that they can actually observe it in those who they work with and not maybe perform rejuvenation on people who are actively undergoing high levels of inflammation. The eyes tell us so much about what's going on internally. That's why if you do notice some redness and puffiness around the eyes, darkness, irritation, that's actually one of the first signs of your body visibly or, you know, from a sense perspective, letting you know that something's a little bit off and to take extra good care of yourself. Love you all so much. If you have any questions from today's episode, don't be a stranger. Learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com where one-on-one -on -one sessions are available for at-home and in-clinic planning, my skincare tutorials, and of course, the School of Radiance membership. And shout out to Tammy. Tammy just joined. And the other day I recorded a session and, uh, you know, Michelle had some great questions. Kara had some great questions on actually how to engage in communication with people, how to shift the energy. This is really important, especially when it comes to this concept called resilience. So that no matter what situation 
your nervous system doesn't get rocked. You're continually cool, calm, and collected. A key component to being radiant is to always be ready. So always keeping that oxidative stress status down, having great products on hand, take care of acne, hyperpigmentation, red sensitive skin, as well as adaptogens and antioxidants, all those good things all the time. So that when life throws you a curveball or a stressor and a stress is a sign of being alive, you are more resilient so that you can easily overcome that obstacle. It's not a roadblock and there's usually a lesson in that obstacle as well so that you're always radiant no matter what. No one is going to care for you in the way that you are going to care for yourself. Please don't think that looking after your skin is selfish or vain. I'd love for you to just kind of cancel and delete that because the skin is the largest organ of your body and it is a direct reflection of what's going on on the inside. But it isn't just about having great skin. It isn't just about having, you know, a shredded physique and a great looking body composition. It's about being in connection with yourself and others in the highest way possible so that when you enter a room, the right people notice you in the right way at the right time. And sometimes that in and of itself can bring in beautiful opportunities to support you both personally and professionally. So that's what this radiance piece is all about. And looking and feeling your best are simply byproducts from you taking the time to be here, listening to this episode. So I'm very grateful and thankful for each and every one of you who are here on this journey with me. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about my personal journey, I warmly invite you to download my Audible Radiance, the New Skin Science, where I take you on a journey of, you know, behind the scenes, some of the things that I've overcome in my life, my background, obstacles I faced, as well as this long fast I did in the desert at altitude, which completely transformed me. And no, not everyone can do a long fast and that's okay. But really, I was kind of prompted. My body was like, do this fast. It's going to be good for you. So I was like, okay, I did it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of research on doing a long fast once a year for reducing things like cancer. There's a lot of great research on my website as well. You can find my published research on my research tab at the school of And I'm just really excited to be able to teach and share these things. I really feel like I've hit the life jackpot with being able to share insights on how to become your most beautiful and radiant versions as well. And when you get to learn this stuff, you get to live it. And you also get to share it, you know, one little drip at a time to those who start to ask you, wow, your skin looks fantastic. Oh, you know, your body looks incredible. What are you doing? Wow, your hair is so full. Are those your nails? You are seemingly, you know, you haven't aged since I last saw you. These are all things that are very common to start to hear when you connect with people maybe that you haven't seen in a while not to mention being psychologically resilient and positive and beautiful in your conversations and connections. So really at the end of the day, that's what I'm all about and really excited to teach you alongside the skin and rejuvenation side of things too. So have a great, beautiful, high vibe rest of your day, everybody. Love you all so much. And I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.